Will I buy this phone myself? Um, no. For a little bit of backstory, I've been on a journey to live a more digitally minimalistic life for almost a year now. When I first started my journey, I knew that I wanted to leave my smartphone behind because I was addicted to my smartphone as well as social media. When I first started looking at dumb phones, quote unquote, I chose the Nokia 6300. But I didn't know this was also referred to as a feature phone and was a little bit too smart for my needs. So I had narrowed down my search a bit more to look at minimalist phones. When I was looking at a minimalist phone, I was comparing the Light Phone 2 versus the Punked MP01 or MP02. I chose Punked in the end because I live in Europe and the Light Phone 2 was not yet supported in Europe. It will be soon as of July 15th of this year. But fast forward to now, if I had to make the same decision again, with this new device release, the Light Phone 3, would I choose it? Well, let's take a look at the Light Phone 3 to see what options it offers, especially compared to the Light Phone 2. Now this week when the Light Phone 3 announcement dropped, I was quite shocked. I couldn't believe that they're releasing a newer device. I thought the Light Phone 2 was great. And when I took a deeper look at the Light Phone 3, I think it might be targeted to a different audience perhaps than the Light Phone 2. Looking at the Light Phone 3, you'll notice that the size is considerably larger or the dimensions are a bit different than the Light Phone 2. Also, you'll notice some new features. Looking at the screen itself, it is 3.92 inches and it is no longer an e-ink display. They've gone with a matte glass and AMOLED display. I think this is an interesting choice and I think it's the right one if you're going to leave the e-ink device. The matte screen is fingerprint resistant, but more importantly, it also reduces eye strain, especially those like myself who are visually impaired, reflections or glares from a screen can be really irritating. I think the matte screen was an excellent choice, especially if they're going to leave the e-ink display. The AMOLED display is also better on the eyes than the LCD. You'll notice that the blacks are blacker on the display and this helps the white text stand out and make it more clear. As somebody, again, who is visually impaired, I really appreciate this feature and I like that the operating system is dark theme or black with white text. It makes it a lot easier for someone to see like myself and it's just more clean and less distracting. It says on their website that they made the screen size wider because they want it to make it easier for people to text. I noticed a lot with the Light Phone 2, in order to text properly, you had to turn the phone into landscape mode. And I'm sure this could be annoying after a while. It should also be easier to text now without having the refresh of the e-ink display. I also noticed on the front of the device, if you go down to the bottom, you'll have a large speaker grill. Now, I think this is an interesting design choice. I think they might regret it as far as dust and particles getting into the speaker grill. I know for me, when I had the BlackBerry Priv, I had this issue. It was also a front-facing speaker grill at the bottom of the device and I had a lot of dust getting in there and it was a black device so you could always see something specs on it. I know the device now is IP54 so I think this should prevent the dust from getting in the device and causing any issues but I think it will be more of a physical annoyance or a visual annoyance for those of you who like to keep their devices quite clean. Now another interesting feature I saw with the device was the wheel located on the left hand side. I think this obviously is used for navigation and again it reminds me of my mp3 player the mention as well. I think the wheel is an interesting choice. I would like to see the resistance of the wheel. Does it click? What does it feel like? And is it easy to replace? I know when there's more moving features like this on devices, there is a higher likelihood that these elements will break if you accidentally drop the device or just with usage. Speaking of repairability, on the back of the device, you'll notice that there are four screws. And in the promotional video, it shows somebody unscrewing the device, and I'm guessing you'll be able to replace the battery. As somebody who is team removable battery, this is amazing, and I think it's a great feature to have for any device. Honestly, I think it should be a law. <laughs> Europe, can you please make this an obligation for all manufacturers for newer devices? 
This will make the device last longer and if the battery life starts going, you can replace your battery easily yourself. Now, on the right hand side of the device, you'll find the volume up, down, as well as the menu button. And in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a shutter button. Yes, this phone does have a front facing and rear facing camera. The rear facing camera is 50 megapixels and the front facing is eight. I don't know why the camera has to be 50 megapixels for this specific device. If you're taking images on this device, it will show in black and white on the device, but the pictures will be in color. This kind of reminds me of when I take pictures on my book's Palma, for example. Um, when I take pictures on that device, it looks like it's black and white on the device, but if you send it to other devices, the image will appear in color and more or less be like any other camera. I know a lot of people must have requested the camera option. Um, I'm not one of those people who needs a camera for their dumb phone, but I understand that some people really want this feature. Will this phone be supporting any communication apps in the future that would use the camera? I would be really curious if this device takes on the option to use WhatsApp, for example, because those of us who live outside of the US rely on WhatsApp to communicate with text, with video calls, and even with work a lot of the times. So the fact that this device has a camera option gives me hope that perhaps in the future it could support some kind of communication application. Now in the top right hand corner of the device, you'll find the power button, which also now has a fingerprint reader. I'm guessing you'll be using your index finger to unlock the device, judging by how you would be holding the device. Speaking of holding the device, the device has weird dimensions to me, at least. It's a square-like device. It seems like it might be uncomfortable for those with smaller hands. And when I was comparing the dimensions, it was actually quite similar to my BlackBerry Q10, which is a great size for a device. Yes, it doesn't have a physical keyboard like the Q10, but the dimensions of the height and the width are more or less the same and I find that this form factor is ideal for sticking in your pocket to go. I think the Light Phone 2 is maybe more pocketable and the screen is a lot smaller, of course, but I think this device and the Light Phone company in general really focuses on making smaller devices so that way people can just put it in the pocket and forget about it. Now, speaking about the internals, um, I know that there's a lot more memory on this device and this will make a lot of people happy. It has 128 gigabytes of internal storage, which is great for the music app as well as the podcast app. So you'll be able to add a lot more music and a lot more podcasts. I would have loved to have an external SD card to slip in there because I like to switch devices a lot and having to think about uploading newer music to my device before switching my devices, it's an extra step that I personally wouldn't wanna take, but I understand people would probably switch this device and make it their main driver. This device is also using the Light OS. I find the Light OS is great. It has the best minimalist app setup. I mean, you have your podcast and music, of course, but you have notes, voice memos, calendar, a timer, and an alarm. So, I mean, it's everything you need for a minimalist phone. Judging by the features that are being put into this phone, perhaps there'll be additional applications that are added later on. I noticed that this device also has NFC, so I have a question of whether or not you'll be able to add any apps that include, for example, paying with your device. Speaking of other features found in the specs, it will be a 5G or 4G LTE, and it will also, of course, have GPS because you do have the Maps function, which does exist on the Light Phone 2, but is more difficult to use with an e display. I think having the newer display might make navigating a lot easier. I think overall the specs are a definite upgrade compared to the Light Phone 2, but it needed to be upgraded if they're going to add different features such as the camera. Now, the most important part for me as well is the price. Now, it looks like the pre-order price will be $399, but be aware, this doesn't last long. The price will only be $399 until July 15th, which it will be bumped up to $799. Now, this is a lot of money for this specific device, and I believe that that price is a bit high, I understand that they have to fund the device and get it into production. But I think similarly to the Light Phone 2, eventually the price will go down because it will not be sustainable at $799. I don't know many people who would pay that much money for a minimalist device. 
399 is already a higher price, especially for the minimalist phones. The Light Phone 2 is at 299 so this is still an interesting price. Still on the high side for a lot of people who want specific features, but still obtainable for those who really want an e-ink display or a very minimalist, precise phone that's going to get continual updates. Will I buy this phone myself? Um, no. Um, and this is why. For me, the Light Phone 3 is a bit more distracting than the Light Phone 2, in my opinion. I'm not somebody who needs a camera on my device. I understand that some people really want this feature, but I use a separate camera from all of my devices. And if I'm going to take pictures or videos, I'm not going to be using my device. Also, the form factor is a bit strange for me. I don't like the, the boxiness of the design. Um, I do like the size, of course, of the Q10, but it also has a physical keyboard. So that design makes more sense if you're going to be typing with two hands, especially. But since this device is just a screen with a speaker at the bottom, uh, it doesn't really appeal to me. But I understand it will appeal to a lot of people. Another reason I won't buy this device is probably the price. Um, it's a bit too much for me. If it comes down in the future or there's used devices, maybe I would consider it. But not for now. One major plus of the Light Phone 3 is that it will be available to use globally. So you'll be able to connect to your carrier worldwide. The big limitation of the Light Phone 2 is that there is not an international edition as of today. It will be released in July of 2024. But the fact that they designed the Light Phone 3 to be used globally is a great decision and I think this will appeal to a wider audience. Who is this device for? I think it's for somebody who is looking again to reduce their addiction maybe to their phone and want to really be living a distraction-free life. I think this is a great concept and I love the initiative of the Light Phone Company targeting schools, especially. I think especially some schools have adopted the Light Phone for their students and I think this is a healthy way to approach technology and to teach younger generations how to use technology in a healthier way. So I really like that this company is focused on living a distraction-free life. But again, the price is a bit out of range for most people and especially the Light Phone 3 at $7.99 when it's full price, I think a lot less people will be jumping in. If you're looking to jump into this device, I would suggest to do it as soon as possible while it's 50% off. I can't wait to see more about the device, more demos, more enhanced um, reviews and things like this. Maybe it will convince me in the future, but to be honest, if I had to choose a Light Phone today, I would choose the Light Phone 2. I don't plan on getting the Light Phone 2, but if I had to choose, this would be the device because I do like the e-ink display. And I'm sad when companies move away from e-ink because I think e-ink is a great option. But there is the minimal phone, which is proposing e-ink, so who knows, maybe other companies will pick up the relay where the Light Phone is leaving it out. Also, since this device is in the pre-order phase, it is set to be delivered in January of 2025. So if you're in a rush to get a minimalist phone, this phone will be coming out seven months later. So it is something that you will have to be waiting for and be patient for. But I know that they'll deliver on time, I'm sure, because it is a reputable company. It has already released two previous devices, the Light Phone 2 and the Light Phone. So I have hopes that they will be in production and deliver on time. So. I think if I were to back this device, I would have more confidence than other projects out there right now. Are you interested in the Light Phone 3? Are you going to pre-order it? I'm really curious to see who's interested in this device and why you're attracted to the device. I think it is an interesting device. It is very unique. The design is different and I can't wait to see more from it. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.